I'm Martin Dubu, I'm an analyst at Jefferies and I cover the big consumer goods companies like Unilever and Reckitt Benckiser and Nestle. I started my career in, in ads, in agencies, so I've seen it from both ends. And I think my first and most important message is don't underestimate what is the crisis of growth at the moment in traditional consumer goods marketing. This is the average organic revenue growth rates of some of the world's biggest blue chip consumer goods companies by quarter since the start of 2009. You don't need to read the numbers on the chart to see that the bars are getting lower. Top line growth rates are going down and volume growth, which is the blue bar, which the likes of Paul Polman at Unilever will tell you is the only good sort of growth, is disappearing almost entirely. Is there a double whammy right now, which is not only a squeeze on marketing budgets, and I'm thinking particularly in FMCG, um, but in addition, is there more short-termism in the sense that a higher proportion of those budgets are going into short-term sales activation rather than long-term brand building? One very obvious way in which the world has become short-term is in agency tenures. If there's a barometer of short-termism, it probably doesn't get any better than this. When I was a lad in ads in 1984, uh, the average length of a client-agent relationship was 86 months, seven years. Uh, now, uh, you know, 30 years later, it's 30 months, two and a half years. Much, much higher churn, clear evidence of pressure for short-term results. The marketing community tends to demonise the financial analyst community as people who are fundamentally short-termist, only interested in the bottom line, and generally hostile to investing in marketing. These things are totally untrue. Uh, there's in my view no evidence empirical or anecdotal that the financial markets are looking for people to disinvest in marketing and not drive growth there's a whole batch of evidence to go the other way but I think what I would say is that analysts don't have a sophisticated understanding of marketing and advertising. We lack for instance a, a, just a basic knowledge of the fact that a lot of marketing investment is purely defensive it's not about growth. Uh, the work that Paddy has done built on by Ehrenberg Bass around the importance of penetration and therefore you know the ability of big brands to build both loyalty and penetration simultaneously that's that's not well understood and of course there is a huge uh, knowledge gap and increasingly difficult questions being asked about you know the commitment to digital marketing in the context of around 25 percent of consumer goods companies budgets going in that direction so it's really about dialogue and understanding based on the ability of marketeers to speak financial language. I think marketers, first of all, simply need to learn the language of finance and business. And the truth is, it's not that difficult. Okay, that, you know, you can get a book, you can go on a one week course, get yourself comfortable with basic, basic finance. The concepts, not, you know, all the detailed numbers. Uh, but secondly, I think it's a, it's a kind of behavioral thing that, um, if your mindset is these people are interested in screwing us, they don't understand that brands have value, um, then that will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. CFOs want valuable brands as much as marketeers do. It's a, it's a collaboration, it's not a competition. It is not the case that CEOs and CFOs don't understand that brands are valuable. And we now know this in a very interesting way because other things being equal, they are willing to be paid less to work for a company with strong brands. You need a positive mindset so that the, the self-fulfilling prophecy is a positive one, saying, I will reach out, I will understand what are the big business issues, I will learn to talk business and finance, I will reach out to my operations colleagues and my finance colleagues and so on, and I will make it happen. And uh, our data says, those people have more business impact and they have better careers.